Renault Duster, Generation 1, from 2010 to 2013. The Renault Duster is an entry-level soft roader built by Dacia and rebadges Renault for emerging markets. This model was first unveiled in production form on December 8, 2009. The parent company Renault wanted this SUV to be an affordable and clever choice for the small SUV segment. Based on the BO platform like the successful Logan, the Duster will ride higher with a ground clearance of over 200 mm which is about 7.9 inches and take advantage of 4x2 or 4x4 drive systems. Engine-wise, the car was fitted with a 1.6-litre petrol unit developing 110 horsepower and a 1.5-litre diesel with 85 and 105 horsepower respectively. Generation 2 from 2013 to 2018 For 2013, the Duster was refreshed with a new styling, highlighting its rugged crossover SUV with more character. Since this is a budget car through and through, the changes aren't that radical, but they will be liked by the customers. New headlights have been added, featuring the same shape but a new design with added daytime running lights. The car also received Duster-labeled roof bars with slated supports and a new 16-inch dark metal alloy wheels equipped with mud and snow tires. Round the back, the only change is seen in the slight refresh of the taillights and a chrome tip for the exhaust. Here's where it gets exciting with Generation 3, 2018 to current. CBBT was lucky enough to attend the global unveiling of the Duster at the 2018 Paris International Motor Show. The new Duster is built on the same platform as the Nissan Qashqai, X-Trail, Renault Kajar, Renault Coles, and comes with more efficient engines. Question is, will the new generation Duster triumph over its entry-level rivals such as the Hyundai Creta and Suzuki Vitara? Let's find out. So guys, this is the key to the Renault Duster second generation. This particular car was designed to be a bare basic point A to B crossover, but now, with the stiff competition from the likes of the Hyundai Creta and the Suzuki Vitara, things have changed. What has Renault done to enhance the offering of the Renault Duster? Let's start with the design. As you can see here, it borrows heavily from the Renault family, the V-Motive design. You've seen it on the Colios, on the Kaja, and of course, the Quid, which we'll be reviewing very, very soon. Slated grille as well, as you can see, corresponds with the quadratic lights, give this car that style that the French so have. That genre de quoi that we all desire from our French car. And of course, the chrome grille completes that premium offering. As you can see, the bumper is two-tone, just to denote that off-roading capability, and you'll see it at the back as well. And of course, the boot lip is raised higher up just to ensure that you have enough ground clearance and Mr. Mirigi is going to take this car off-road and give you the full advice on this particular car's abilities. Moving over to the side profile, as you can see, Renault have managed to maintain the basic design of the Duster but have enhanced it with a few things as you can see. This cladding that is on the front fender runs all the way to the door seal, all the way to the back, giving this car that athletic stance and off-road ability. As you can see here, the Duster as well, emblazoned on this roof rail as well in a two-tone color as the front lip and at the back. As you can see here, Renault have also done something similar. They have changed the lights now, they are more square and rectangular. And of course, it's a cross design giving this car that unique look at the back. And of course, the gray on the rear bumper gives this car as well that athletic stance that you also find at the front. And that's what Renault have done, giving this car that easy eye on the feel, on the eye, making it look very good and very pleasant. That's it, that's the design, I like it been refreshed it's a proper proper refresh but inside have we not done the best to ensure that the cabin is much more plush let's find out so guys step inside this luxurious cabin of the Renault dust and I can tell you for a fact Renault ain't playing now let's start with the center console as you can see on top you do have aircraft style vents that are very classy and gives this car that look and obviously, as you can see, the main design of the dashboard, it's a, it's a one-piece and it's a forward cabin design that allows you to have enough space at the front. Right below the vents, you do have a multi-touch color display that houses the radio, climate control, and navigation that actually works in Kenya. I'm going to leave that to Mr. Mirigi, who's our resident tech expert, and going to give you a lowdown on this Renault R-Link system, which is very, very brilliant. Actually, the maps actually work properly in this town, in this country. Now, right below the screen, actually, you do have aircraft style buttons as well. So you have your ESP, you do have your uh, parking assist and so much more. Of course, this design gives this car that difference because most of these uh, crossovers don't have that kind of design. And I below it do have the climate control system, which 
actually it's very innovative it's three circular knobs but in between you do have a monochrome display that now shows you the vent direction the ac circulation and of course the fan speed which is very unique and actually saves space it removes that clutter that you probably find on many other cars now moving right below the instrument binnacle that's where the magic is you can keep your phone and many other things and of course you do have the gearbox console which doesn't have anything doesn't look overly cluttered and it's just you know designed to, to just have the job done there is no center console which i think right now sacrificed uh, so that you can have enough space in between the two seats now moving over to the instrument binnacle obviously you do have a redesigned uh, instrument panel obviously in the middle you have a multi-information display that houses uh, different types of settings so you can tell the distance the range and of course you do have the temperature settings and any other function that is vital for the driver which is very very important the seats comfortable as you can see i'm very comfortable uh, gone are the bench seats that it, it had earlier basic seats but this one are ribbed and actually very supportive it even has an armrest so that you can enjoy driving this particular during long distances and of course you do have plenty of leg and headroom and obviously you can adjust the steering as well based on your preference tilt and telescopic just to make sure that you are very comfortable while driving this car but the biggest question still remains one how good is the infotainment system Two, is there space at the back seat? And of course, do you have enough uh, storage space to carry your luggage? How flexible is the car? Join us, Mr. Murik is going to take over and give you an analysis of these particular features only on cars with big boy travel. So like Trevor mentioned, this car comes packed with technology. This is no longer the car that was just a rugged off-roader. They have tried to do some stuff to make this more practical for the millennial because Younger and younger people are using these cars and we have demands for technology that we need. So starting over here, we have the Media Nav Evolution System. It's a pretty familiar system for anybody that's done anything with Renault. So everything over here is showing you on the menu. You actually have the USB at the top here and auxiliary in at the top. There's a 12 volt socket at the bottom there just to make sure that you have power for the people in the front. So this system has a very interesting driving ecosystem because like Trevor mentioned, this is also a car that has been built to ensure that you have fuel efficiency. So the car can actually score you on how well you drive and give you tips on how to drive better to conserve more fuel and to make sure that you have this car for longer running as smoothly as it possibly can. In addition to that, this car actually has navigation that is built in with maps that work in Kenya. You have a very nice music system actually that's pretty loud and very powerful. In addition to that, this system also helps you to manage some of the safety systems within the car. Key among them being the multi-view camera. So you actually have a camera system in here that allows you to see all four regions of the car, the front, the rear, and the side that really helps you when you're going off-road. In addition to that, it has hill departure control and hill start assist. So let's check out the back to see how much space this has for the passengers and any stuff that you want to carry. Coming around to the back of the Renault Duster and you can see there's quite a lot of space at the back here for rear passengers. This seat is set to Trevor's driving position. He is six foot one, I am five foot nine, and I have a lot of space for my knees and for my feet under here. One of the things that's very nice about the back seat over here is that the transmission tunnel is very small, so three adults can sit here very comfortably. One of the things that changed from the first to the second generation is the seats, and these seats are very comfortable. I think Trevor mentioned them in the front over there. In terms of storage space, you have two cup holders available to people over here. There are door cards in the bin, and there's a very interesting storage solution in the front seat, just under the front seat, to make sure that you have lots of spaces to put stuff. In the back over here, you have a three-point safety belt for the person sitting in the middle, so you can actually have three adults sitting here, and you have isofix points for child seats in both of the outboard seats of the back seat of this car. So let's check out the back to see how much it has for stuff that you want to carry when you're going out and about. Coming around to the boot of the Renault Duster and this has one of the largest boots in its class. That class of course being small compact SUVs. This has 436 liters of capacity or 350 if you have the 4x4 version because the off-road 4x4 technology in the back eats into the space over here. One other interesting thing is that the spare tire is actually fitted under the car like you would do in a pickup. Looking at the inside, it's a very wide and deep space that allows you to put quite a lot of stuff with tie down points and a 12 volt socket at the top over here. But let's take this on the road and see what Trevor has to say about his driving dynamics. Today we are driving the Duster again. 
But this generation 2 duster has a lot of bells and whistles that has made it a formidable entry-level crossover that somebody might desire. But let's start with the power. Now up front you do have, this particular one actually has a 1.5 DCI uh, diesel combo rail injection courtesy of Renault and it produces 110 horsepower, 90 kilowatts, 213 kilometers of torque that when you push it, it gives you some decent, it's, it's some good grunt. And all that power is sent to the front wheels courtesy of a six-speed CVT a gearbox that's on the Renault Nissan Alliance. You probably find it as well on the Nissan X Trail and of course the coolers that we tested earlier on. This particular car will do 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is very good. Considering that Nairobi is an urban jungle, so there's plenty of traffic, there's plenty of uh, uh, good spaces where you can gun it, um, you're able to enjoy this particular car. But that said, the feeling on the road is well done. We, we drove the first generation some time back, and I can tell you from the suspension department that Renault have done so much to ensure that it remains very steady even on tarmac. The front McPherson struts is actually trying to keep the nose down and at the back we do have a trailing arm suspension that also allows this car to be very steady on these sharp curves and of course even if you turn it down like this on sport mode it is still very responsive the steering is sharp and precise it's hydraulic and of course allows this car to become very very um, enjoyable especially when you're driving i actually love this 1.5 liter turbo diesel because it's got so much power and grunt for 1.5 this one can easily um, you know, you can enjoy short runs, short bursts, and of course, because of torque delivery, 213 in terms of torque is not a joke. But when it comes to safety, you want to ensure that you and your family are safe. So what happens? So this particular car has a mix of active and passive safety features. By now you know the drill. Active safety features are the ones that prevent you from having an accident. So anti-lock braking system, ESP, and of course, many other traction control that allows this car to literally have the ability to stay away from trouble but if you run out of talent then you can rely on the multiple airbags that are strewn across the cabin and of course the safety cell rating of this particular car um, dissipates impact energy away from the safety cell keeping you in, in your family safe but remember the most important thing that you ever need is what a safety belt and of course that's isofix anchors to ensure that you're able to put your baby seat at the back so that your babies and your kids remain safe. Now we're gonna do a test and Mr. Mirigi will become the captain of the ship as he takes this particular car off-road and we see the ground clearance, how, it, how the suspension plays about and of course the comfort and then finally give you value for money. Stay tuned, that was a big boy trip. So this car is sold in very many variants and you can choose in between each of the six variants depending on what you want. So there's a 4x4, there's a 4x2, there's an automatic transmission, a manual transmission, and then you can choose between diesel and petrol. The car we're driving right now is the car that we think is the one that most people are going to buy, which is the 4x2 diesel. So what you get here is a very great combination of fuel efficiency and still some capability. So although this is not the full four-wheel drive version, this still has great ground clearance, about 210 millimeters of travel, and it is fitted with, of course, now better tires, which allow it to do this kind of off-roading. So we've taken it out here into a bit of a off-road test track, which simulates what would you would be doing if you were going up country. If you had to go off the road to go visit your show show after the quarantine has been lifted, and carry some stuff, then this is exactly what you'd be doing. So there's a lot of space in the boot, so there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be carrying, and we are taking it to a place where it's a bit tricky. The other key thing to note is the fact that this has a multi-view camera system, 360 degree camera system, that allows you to actually see exactly where each wheel of the car is, and it allows me to put the car specifically where I want it to be. So let's take this back on tarmac and check out what it has to offer terms of value for money so guys we've tested the duster again and i can tell you for a fact it has grown on us since the time we saw it at the live launch at the paris motor show it has become one of our darlings on this particular show and we can't wait to sample even the next generation but mr mirigi how much 
that is car cost. Well, this is very interesting because you don't get this a lot with other models of cars. This comes in a very wide variety of cars, which is not something that you see generally in showroom cars that are sold in Kenya. So it depends on whether you want this car 4x4 or 4x2, whether you want it diesel or petrol, and whether you want an automatic or a manual. So there's a very wide range of cars that are available, but prices for this start at 2.7 million shillings wow. for the 4x4 automatic petrol, and will go all the way up until the top of the line, 1.5 diesel manual. Wow. That's a 4x4. Wow. But what we have tested today is the car that we think most people are going to buy in the market. So the best of the range, the peak of the range, and that's the automatic diesel 4x2. That gives you basically the higher down clearance and the great fuel efficiency. And of course, an amazing cabin. Incredible. Guys, and the warranty also comes, the 300,000 kilometer warranty, uh, courtesy of Kaitano Kenya, and you're able to service this car and maintain it to the best of its ability. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on Kazi Big Boy Trev. As always, it's an honor. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, don't hesitate to write to us as seen on the social media handles below. And we'll get back to you next week. We're signing out. This is Big Boy Trev. This is Murigi. Drive safe. And be safe. <laughs>